Good day, everyone. I'm Hao Xu. I work with research assistant Daniel Ediger in the Tree Fruit Physiology program. In this talk, I will briefly introduce our program's main research scope, and I will present three projects that we conducted since 2018 and the new projects that have been developed based on the research outcomes of this project. The scope of our research. About 70% of our research activities are carried out in field trials and 30% in lab or in greenhouse to investigate the internal rhythms of plant and fruit growth and development. Fruit trees are exposed to various of stresses around the year, such as water deficit and temperature extremes. We are interested in the impacts of the abiotic stresses on water transport, photosynthesis, critical developmental stages such as fruit set, fruit growth, fruit quality and yield, and crop resilience. Uh, we use instruments to investigate physiological mechanisms underlying stress responses and to assess crop performance under horticultural mitigations. Mitigations can be generalized into two categories. Firstly, the methods to strengthen or recover the internal balance between supply and demand within the trees. For example, use of rootstocks to control vigor, improve yield efficiency, and enhance crop resilience. Or we have uh, crop load management to control biennial bearings and uh, improve fruit quality. We can also mitigate to avoid or reduce environmental stresses, for example, through irrigation scheduling or uh, through use the foliar sprays of biostimulant or protectants. A key question we try to answer is how to sustain a good hydraulic carbohydrate relation in the crop for fruit production sustainability and for crop resilience. Past and new projects. We conducted a five-year Canadian Agricultural Partnership project on courses and horticultural mitigations for low fruit set in sweet cherry. This was supported by BC Cherry Association, SVC, and BCFGA, and in collaboration with Integrated Nutrient Management Program led by Dr. Madi Sharifi. We monitored five sites of lappings to identify the courses for low fruit set. In our main experimental trial, we also tested the effects of summer pruning, dormancy break regulator, seaweed spray, and uh, irrigation timing on the fruit set in lappings. The main environmental threats were low temperatures and uh, excessive moisture after bud break and during blossom. Warming could also lead to oval abortion and low fruit set. Uh, flower development defects are critical internal factors. When pistol loses viability before it receives enough viable pollen, pollination and fertilization fails, causing no fruit set. Sometimes it is due to desynchronized development of stigma, the female part, and uh, stamen, the floral male part. Or it could be caused by answer failure or insufficient viable pollens. Sometimes it's due to lack of floral fragrance, so the flowers don't attract pollinators. These photos are just a comparison between the normal answer with abundant variable pollens and the abnormal answers, which doesn't produce enough pollens. This slide summarizes the horticultural mitigations that we tried on lappings on creams five rootstocks in a high frost risk location. Summer pruning led to more starch reserves in the flower buds. However, the impact on fruit set in the subsequent spring was not significant. Dormancy brick regulator and seaweed extract spray show some effects 
in reducing pistol browning and alleviating post-harvest stress. However, they did not affect fruit set. The exact timing and concentration of the spring application should be optimized. In 2022, we had a, a warmer March and uh, a colder and wetter than Euro April. We postponed the irrigation for six weeks starting from full bloom. This led to the decrease in pistol browning and the increase in fruit set. In the next four years, we are carrying out a new study on low fruit set in new sweet cherry cultivars in collaboration with Aaron Wallach SVC and our Sumland colleagues Emery Posing, Yoshi Watanabe, Tom Forge, and Kirsten Hannan. We are investigating the previously mentioned floral developmental defects that leads to the failure of pollination and fertilization in the genetically self fertile cultivars. These characteristics can be added to screen criteria for new cultivar selections. We will also test practices such as external pollen spray, plant growth regulators to regulate bud break or to promote pollen growth. And we will use pollinizers, pollinators, and pollinator attractant to improve pollination in a cultivar that doesn't have enough pollens or floral fragrance. And we will also test dwarfing rootstocks and multi-leader training systems to increase the abundance of flowers. For cultivars that have multiple defects, use of external pollen can be the critical step. The second projects we did in the last five years were the effects of irrigation, crop load, and rootstocks on ambrosia apple dry matter in collaboration with New Variety Development Council, Dr. Tom Forge, Dr. Chang Wen Lu, and Dr. Masme Bajayi. We monitored fruit quality attributes in six orchards in five years, and we found that the extreme fruit weight and dry matter content were associated with fruit quality issues and were often indicative of pre-harvest stresses such as water deficit or poor crop load management. We also conducted trials in three commercial orchards in Colston and two ex experimental trials at Summerland Research Center to study the effects of irrigation crop load and rootstock. In the irrigation reduction experiment, inspired by Dr. Peter Toivonen, Dr. Chang Lu found that early season reduction resulted in a rapid and sustained increase in dry matter content throughout the summer, and a higher soluble solid content at harvest, and a significant improvement in the post-harvest fruit quality retention. In addition, we collaborated with Dr. Tom Ford's lab to investigate the effects of irrigation interval and irrigation timing. In the interval trial, we tested 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, and 96 hours interval of 100% evapotranspiration replacement. The 24 hours resulted in higher dry matter content. However, it also increased post storage disorder incident. The 96 hours interval led to lower stem water potential and lower fruit dry matter content. And in the irrigation initiation timing trial of 100% ET replacement per 72 hours on the high crop load, which was 5.5 fruits per centimeter square of trunk cross section area, the irrigation initiated at 6 a.m led to higher fruit mass compared to irrigation initiated at 12 a.m., 1 p.m., or 7 p.m. When crop load was about three fruits per centimeter square of trunk cross-section area, the irrigation timing did not have any significant effect anymore. In the crop load study, the crop load lower than three fruits per centimeter square of trunk cross section area or higher than six led to fruit quality issues. 
maintaining crop load in the range of four to six fruits per centimeter square of trunk cross section area is a beneficial practice to sustain ambrosial fruit quality. In the last while, we've done intensive rootstock study, both in the ambrosial project and in a couple of ABES projects funded by AFC. Uh, these photos of uh, xylem cross-section shows the differences of water transporting vessel elements in Scion versus in rootstock. The vessel elements in the rootstocks are smaller and also in lower density. Water supply to Scion is limited due to the limited water transporting capacity of the root and also the distortion at the graft union. These hydraulic restrictions effectively control the tree vigor. However, it can be problematic when there are environmental stresses. We used multiple stress indicators in leaves and in fruits to analyze the water use strategies and the resilience mechanisms of different rootstocks under water deficit and heat stress. Small dwarfing such as B9 was more drought tolerant, whereas semi dwarfing such as G202 was more susceptible to drought. The moderate and large dwarfing rootstocks show the strategy of drought avoidance. Compared to small and moderate dwarfing rootstocks, large dwarfing such as G935 requires more water per tree. However, they develop larger canopy, higher stem water potential, better capacity of transpirational cooling, and more resilient to heat stress. They also produce better fruit quality and a higher dry matter per fruit and higher projected yield. In the next four years, we will work on a new project supported by a new variety development council to continue the study on rootstocks and crop load management in Ambrosia Apple in collaboration with our sensory scientist, Dr. Masume Bajei and uh, post-harvest physiologist, Dr. Xiaotang Yang. We will study the effects of precise winter pruning on crop load in small, medium, and large dwarfing rootstocks, and the effectiveness of model-based sprays for blossom thinning and fruit thinning, and also the crop load effects on fruit quality and crop performance. The study will show the applicability of pollen tube growth model and the carbohydrate deficit model on ambrosia apple chemical thinning. We will also develop rootstock specific pruning and crop load management recommendations. Lastly, we carry out a long term collaboration with NC140 Research Committee to evaluate how to improve sustainability in tree fruit production through changes in rootstock use. Currently, we have a bulk eye gala rootstock trial established in 2019, which we will visit this afternoon. In the future, we plan to establish rootstock trials for ambrosia and peach. We hope to build a platform for collaborators to study the roles of rootstocks in vigor control, yield, biennial bearing, fruit quality attributes, cold acclimation, water relations, responses to weather extremes, and resilience to biotic stresses. And we will be able to select the more suitable rootstocks for more sustainable food production and a better crop resilience under our local climate. With that, I thank all the collaborators I mentioned in this talk, Summerland Field Service, Summerland Management, and all the students who have worked with us. As we build this new tree fruit physiology program, we received tremendous support from our colleagues and our industry, New Variety Development Council, SVC, BC Cherry Association, BCFGA, and the Ambrosia and Lappings growers who generously 
granted us with access to their orchards and shared their insights with us. Thank you for your attention.